Hi everyone, welcome to another CMPL Paint and Pour video. Today we're going to be making a winter wonderland. So you're going to need a few supplies, some of which, most of which came in the bag that you picked up from the library, uh, some of which you'll want to provide on your own. So first of all, we have our canvas board and it's going to be placed vertically. I put a piece of paper towel underneath because I tend to be a pretty messy painter and I wanted to make sure that I don't get paint all over my desk here. We also need some paint colors. We need, we've got white, blue, yellow, purple, and green. And again, those all came in your paint bag. I also am using this plastic lid as a palette so I can mix my paint. If you have a paint palette, that's great. If you don't, you can use a paper plate or a piece of a plastic lid like I'm using here, whatever you have running around the house. The other things you'll need are some brushes. We've got the foam brush that came in your kit. We also have the piece of sea sponge in your kit. And then um, there should, there's a small brush here too. I also added some other types of brushes. I also added some additional sizes of brushes just in case I want to mix things up. And these are all ones that I happen to have lying here around the house. Some of them have not been used in a long time and are actually pretty sticky, but <laughs> they will work fine for today's program. The other things you'll need, and these are important, are Q-tips. I need some Q-tips for this. You also have some glitter. The glitter is optional. You can add it on at the end to make your painting sparkle, or you can choose to leave it off. That one's up to you. It's an optional one. The other really important thing is a dish of water. It can be in any sort of dish, just some clean water to wash our brushes. I also have another piece of paper towel so I can blot my brushes. And just because I know myself, I tend to get messy when I do these. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a background. And for the background, we're gonna need our dark colors. So we're gonna need some of the white for everything. We're gonna need some blue and we're gonna need some green. So I'm just going to get a little bit here on my, my canister. And you see, I already am covered in paint. This is just, it's kind of how it goes for me. Okay, dab out some white. I'm gonna use quite a bit of white in things. It helps you keep your colors a little different. All right, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of, of green in the background too. Okay, great. Nice paint smells there. All right. So for this part, you're going to want to use your foam brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to start nice and light during at the center and then get darker as we move outwards. So what we want is we want quite a bit of white here and then a little bit of blue Maybe a little bit of green in there too. I'll show you on my paint palette here. Some nice light colors. And we're gonna start doing long strips in the center of the canvas. Just up and down. Need a little more paint on my brush. Sometimes it can take a little bit to get going especially with these foam brushes. So as you, I said, you want to start nice and light in the center of your canvas, because then we're going to get darker as we move outwards. So as you move out from the center, you want to mix more of the blue and green together and less of the white, but still a little bit, still a little bit of white, because we got to have somewhere to go from here. And this up and down motion. Then 
not quite getting as light as I or as dark as I want it to with this one. So I'm going to use a big brush here too and add some more some more texture to it. My brush has been sitting for a while, so I want to get it a little bit wet. Too wet. Okay. Okay. Already got us something. Hair. <laughs> My painting. Over here on the edges, I want almost entirely, definitely a darker color. My brush is a little bit too wet. I'm not getting the colors that I want. So I'm just going to go straight into the blue. This. And if you're using the paint right out of the container, you want to be careful that you're not mixing it with the other colors. If you're going to mix it, and put it on your palette. Okay. Now I am going to mix. So I'm going to go back to my palette. Get a little bit of the white. A little bit of green. I love the turquoise color that these green and white and blue colors are making. So that's that's some more of what I'm looking for, especially towards the center. But the key part of this is you want these really long up and down strokes. So before you stop with your background, make sure that you've cleaned it up so that all of the strokes are the full length of the canvas in the same direction. What we're creating is this cascading effect that has this light right at the center. And you can always add some white and make that center part lighter. Like so as well as adding the darker colors to get the edges a little bit darker. I'm going to clean off my brush. I really want some more of even lighter colors in the center here. Even lighter. And then building out into the darker colors at the edges. want to take your time with the background. The background sets the tone for the whole painting. So you definitely take your time. Make it look how you want to. Don't feel like you need to be rushed on this part. Because all we're going to do next is actually wait for it to dry. Wait for the background to dry. So we can build our painting on top of it. So once you've come to a background that you're sad, you're comfortable with and you really enjoy, um, you can put your brushes to soak and take a short break while it dries and we'll come back for the next part. Okay, for the next part, what we're going to do is start to work on the snow. Just a reminder, you want to make sure that your background is pretty dry. Uh, if you're if it's taking a long time to dry and you have a hair dryer, you can always do a little hair drying on it. That'll work out well too. For the snow, we're gonna make a little snowy hill, and then our tree is gonna come out of it. So you're gonna need your purple, because our snowy hill has a backdrop of of purple here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of purple on my 
on my palette. You can't quite see purple on my on the palette here. And for this part, I'm going to use my brush again, my large brush, or you can use the foam brush, whichever one you like better. I'm really into the large brush right now. And what I'm going to do is take some of the purple and some of the white and create a lighter purple color. And then I'm going to create just a hill background, big sweep. This is all going to get covered up, so don't worry too much about what it looks like. It just provides us with something to work off of. Some dimension for our snow to go over top of. Okay. Nice little purpley hill. Just like that. So we want to wait just a minute or two, let that dry up a little bit. And what we're going to get into next is with the sponge. This is the fun part. For the sponge, we want some, we're going to mostly use this purple because we're going to have a darker space in the center, in the center of the hill. And that's where the tree's going to come out. So you know how snow tends to leave like a little divot underneath the tree where the branches have blocked it from falling. And that's going to be our dark purple area. And then around it, we're going to have the lighter and lighter snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my light stuff while my sponge is nice and clean. I'm going to get it just a little bit damp. I don't want it sopping wet, but I want it a little bit damp. So a little damp, squeeze it out. And I'm going to put some more white on here in a clean spot on my canvas is I want some freshly fallen snow as well as some that might have gotten a little bit dirtier. Um, so starting with some of the fresh snow, a little bit of purple in there, and what we're going to do is dab the paint on. You should really just have fun with this part. This is making your snowy hilltop here. So the sponge gives it a lot of texture. You want the snow to go around and above this line. Don't forget the bottom of your painting as well. And as I said, I'm doing a lot of light snow on the outside. And then I'm going to have darker snow going into the base of the tree. But it's just a lot of dabbing. This painting, you really get your work out because we're going to do this part. And then for the branches of the tree, that's what our Q-tips are for. So you get in a lot of time spent dabbing things on. So now I'm going to get darker and I want some purple but I want to keep in some of the white there too so it's it's not entirely dark purple but it is darker than the outside. And then I want some that's just purple right in the inside of there. This is a snowy tree on one of those nights where the sky kind of changes colors and everything looks light even though it's nighttime because the fresh fallen snow is messing with the light. So a lot of purple just at the base of the tree. 
And then I'm going to cleanse my sponge, get some of all that gunk paint out. As I said, make it nice and just a little bit damp. So I can put some more white on. All right, that looks good. Kind of weird because we don't have the tree in place yet. But that's our next part. So don't leave any wet paint on your sponge. Otherwise, it's just going to dry in there and get really gunky. And then you won't be able to use it again. So and I left some paint on this one, too. So I want to make sure I'm doing my due diligence and cleaning off my brushes here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foam brush and I'm going to take some of my blue paint and some of my purple paint and I want a really dark color is what I'm looking for. Not a black but like a dark purpley blue and I'm going to get the edge just this top edge of my brush pretty well saturated with it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tree trunk going all the way up to the top. So about in the center of this darker spot, start dabbing out. You can do this while the, the snow is still wet, just be very careful. And you see I'm not using very much paint because all this is going to get covered up. It's just kind of a guideline uh, for me to work from. Okay, so I have this dark line up the center, and that's just my guide for the tree trunk. The only part you'll actually see is the part at the bottom, and it kind of blends in with the snow a little bit. So you can make that as visible or as invisible as you want. The other optional piece is adding glitter to your snow. So we've got a couple of glitter. Uh, told you about the optional glitter at the beginning. We've got a couple of points where you can add glitter, and this is one of them. So I'm going to get my sponge with some white paint again. And then I put a little glitter on my palette, and I'm just going to dip my sponge in glitter. And you'll want to do this as your last layer, because you want the glitter to sit on top of it. So if you decide to add glitter, you're just going to pour some onto your palette. Dip your sponge in. And you're going to press it in with the paint on top of the snow. And that's just to give it a little bit more of a 3D effect. Plus glitter is super fun and sparkly. But again, it is optional. You don't have to add any if you don't want to. Okay, got my glitter on. Now I'm ready to do the tree. So the tree is going to have three layers to it. We're going to have the darkest layer and then a medium layer and then the lightest layer on top. So for my darkest layer, I'm actually going to use some green. Hopefully you left a space for this part on your palette. If not, you might have to stop and clean it off. And then here's my yellow, and I'm going to put the yellow right next to the green on my palette. I'll show you in a second. So the yellow is going to be my middle layer, but I'm also going to mix a little bit with the green for my bottom layer. So I've got the green and the yellow, and then the top layer is going to be just white because that will be the snow. So get ready for the tree. And for this tree, this is where our Q-tips are going to come in handy. So we want to take out three Q-tips at, at a time, create this little bundle, bundle of Q-tips. I've got three in my hand right here. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip them in the green paint, a little bit in the yellow paint, create my color I like here, and get to work on here. You do want to watch it on the Q-tips. It might be helpful to have some scissors handy because these do tend to be a little bit fuzzy. Um, and that's just up to you how much fuzziness you actually want. So starting at the top, I'm dabbing along the line of the tree here. And I'm just using one Q-tip because I want to get the outline. And then to grow the branches off, I'm going to use three Q-tips and just head off to either side, dabbing. And as you know with trees, they get more and more full as you get further down. So this is the technique we're going to be using to build our tree. And your can, tree can be as full or as sparse as you want it to be. Don't feel like it needs to be perfect. The whole point here is just to have fun and try some different techniques. Okay, so that has pretty well saturated my Q-tips and also my trunk isn't quite dry down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to the top and work on the top for a little bit here while I'm waiting for those that bottom to completely dry. And my tree actually goes all the way off the canvas. You're going to work out some of these branches. Kind of have fun with it, play around with the Q-tips. I'm filling in mine a little bit because it's got, definitely has some longer branches, but not quite as many as I gave it in this first initial one. Also, I'm seeing a lot more to the other side. The Q-tips are very forgiving, I will tell you that, and kind of fun. You just can keep going over top of them until you're happy with whatever shape you've created here for your tree. I'm going to go over, because I want to cover up the trunk more, so I'm going to go over it with a little bit of just straight green paint. Leave a little more paint in the center here. So I have a dark center and then lighter going out to the branches. So like that. So that's my first layer. I'm going to let that dry a little bit um, and get a new bundle of Q-tips before I come in for the second layer. Okay, so now that my tree is dry, I'm going to add the base layer of my tree is dry. I'm going to add the next, the middle layer of color. So I'm going to need three more Q-tips. You should have plenty of Q-tips. Um, to do all three layers. So the next one is going to be just in yellow because I want it to be a nice bright light color. What we're going for is the tree looking like it's full of light. So 
what I'm going to do is start on the top here and have this yellow go over most of the tree but not the whole thing so that you can still see the green through which actually this is a pretty light yellow so I don't think I'll have an issue with that Okay, and keep dabbing. I'm putting quite a lot of paint on here because as I said, this yellow is pretty light. So I want to really um, cover the tree so that it looks like it's all lit up. That's the image I'm going for here. You just keep dabbing. It might be useful sometimes to just use one Q-tip, especially as you get out onto the branches here so that you have a little bit more of a, a, a end point for the branch. But the key thing is we want this kind of polka dotted design over top of everything. design that these q-tips make okay really enjoying that so the last one is going to be the white snow on top and once again I'm going to use glitter in mine so that the whole thing can just look like brilliant and on fire this is what I'm looking for now <laughs> Brilliant and sparkly. I'm going to use glitter on the top of my tree so that the whole thing will be sparkly and snow covered and really just shine. So I'm going to set up a bunch of glitter. Okay. I'm going to dry mine off a little bit. Another thing you can do to dry is just kind of wave your painting back and forth. Blow on it really lightly. I'm telling you, a hair dryer does work very well if you've got one of those sitting around. So I'm going to start with white. And I'm really putting, the snow is only on the top parts of the branches, so you want to be a little more thoughtful with where you're placing your snow. Kind of comes down in the middle of the tree. And that part got... And I'm going to add glitter to the top of mine while I'm up at the top. And I just stick the Q-tips in the paint and then the glitter. Again, glitter is optional. Don't have to include it if you're not a glitter fan. So the key thing here is really refreshing with the white paint quite frequently because otherwise you're going to get kind of gummed up with some of the under layers. And I'm, I'm going for more of a freshly fallen snow. 
but I still want the light to come through from the bottom layers. Well, the, the actual tree part and then the yellow indicates the light layer. I don't want it to be totally snow covered, but I do want that snow to be sitting on top of the other layers. Once again, add in some glitter. Oh, the glitter is very fun. Get some more white paint. Alright, I'm going to use the other side of the q-tip. Don't be afraid to change out your q-tips. As I said, it's nice to have quite a few of them on hand so that you don't have to keep using the same ones once they've gotten all gunked up with paint. So that's just not going to give you the look that you're going for here. Just doing some final touch-ups, the outermost branches, just covered up in snow and glitter. This is really the layer where I'm getting the tree nice and full. Branches stick out quite a bit. And that's it. This is my tree. My wintry, glittery snow tree. And while the paint's really dry, I'm even going to sprinkle a little bit more glitter over the white part. The white snow. Um, and the paint's really wet still. Okay, so it's sitting on top. And then, once it's dry, what I can do is shake off the painting. So whatever glitter doesn't stick to it will fall right off. And I will have a lovely little glittery snow covered tree. All right. Thanks for watching.